Hello and welcome back to another episode of Beyond the To-Do List. I'm your host, Eric Fisher, and this is the show where I talk to the people behind the productivity. This week, I'm excited to share with you a conversation I had with Jeffrey and Jamie Downs. They are the co-authors of the great new book, Streaking, the simple practice of conscious, consistent actions that create life-changing results. And that's exactly what we're going to dive into and dig into. This is all about incremental change, building brick by brick, day after day, through the process of streaking. And no, not that kind of streaking. This is about a practical, step-by-step approach to gain mastery over whatever it is you're trying to improve in your life. And so that's what we do in this conversation. We unpack the meaning of streaking. We talk about the power of it, share some stories about how they got into it, as well as the power it has had in their lives and others. And I'm going to tell you right now, I did a while ago an episode of my top five productivity books. If I were to stretch that to the top 10, this would be in there. So you're definitely going to want to pay attention to this one. This is a great conversation with Jeffrey and Jamie Downs. Well, this week, it is my privilege to welcome to the show, Jeffrey and Jamie Downs. Welcome to the show. Wow. Thanks, Eric. Appreciate it. We're looking forward to it. So yeah, we pre pre recording, uh, you're familiar with the show, which is always nice to hear that a guest has actually listened because I get so many pitches from people to to be on the show and i you know most of them don't make it to be quite honest (laughs) (laughs) well we are glad we made the cut because we are big fans we love your show it is absolutely awesome in fact we had to we had to psych ourselves out because we're like he's really great at this yeah i know we had to psych (laughs) ourselves up and go okay we can do this with him we can hang with eric (laughs) yeah well that's on the record now and i'm going to keep that in the show so okay that sounds great yeah i i love the fact that uh one you wrote this book together and you're a husband and wife team so we can definitely get some really interesting insights on this uh, topic coming in. But you've got a book out, a brand new book, in fact, and it's called Streaking, The Simple Practice of Conscious, Consistent Actions That Create Life-Changing Results. And of course, when people hear the word streaking, they think one thing that's obviously not what this book is about. Um, You wouldn't want to make that a habit, would you? No, I'm I'm on a mission to change people's idea of what streaking is. We're going to change it across the world. It'll be a new definition. It won't have anything to do with college or football or clothes <laughs> or the lack thereof. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Well, and then the other people, the productivity people, when they hear the word streaking, they I think most of them probably think of Jerry Seinfeld. Oh, yes. <laughs> and, the you know, the story goes, I don't know that I've ever actually heard in, you know, in quotations or read in quotations, I should say, him saying this. But it's the idea that is attributed to him, at least, that he would on a calendar literally mark an X every day that he would consistently daily have written comedy, sat down, showed up, been productive, done his, you know, ate his frog, in other words, that for that day and then moved on to the next thing. Now, what's great is, is that it doesn't have to be as big as a frog when it comes to streaking. And in fact, uh, you know, before we get into the logistics of how streaking works and some of the, the deeper meaning behind it, I'd love for you to share. How did you stumble upon this tactic, this principle of streaking and why does it mean so much to you? Well, Eric, I have problems. Let's just go with that. (laughs) So do I. Uh, One of the things that, so how did we stumble onto this whole thing? Well, for um, years, we've been trying to, you know, do certain things on a regular basis, be consistent in particular areas and in areas that of our life that would help. So for example, just taking it right to the base level, I need to read more. One of the things that I do, I do a lot of consulting. And in consulting, there are I meet with executive teams and other people who have read a lot and they bring up a book or two or three to me when I'm in those consulting engagements. And I either haven't read it or was not reading the book or whatever it is. And I thought to myself, I've got to figure out how I can get better at reading and just 
to keep up with what it was that they were doing. And so this, so that was kind of rolling around in our head. And then the other part of it was physical fitness. And it's interesting because physical fitness is a lot of times where people will hear about streaks or streaking or what those are. But Jamie and I, we always wanted to be healthy. I mean, we have seven children. Yep. And I, and, and they're a pretty big span. So seven, there's one all the way to seven. And there's a pretty big span of them. Our oldest is 26 and the youngest is nine. So we needed to stay healthy for a prolonged period of time. So our chosen profession of healthiness was, I guess not profession, but our chosen choice of how to stay healthy, of how to stay healthy was running. And what Jamie and I would do is we would sign up for either half marathons or a marathons. We've run a few marathons. We um, would do smaller races and so forth. And there came a point where we kind of got tired of of signing up for the race in order to keep training. I don't know if that makes any sense. It's kind of the John F. Kennedy where he said, I'm going to throw my hat over the fence and then go get it from my neighbor in order to meet my neighbor. We would sign up for races that was throw our hat over the fence and then do the training to run the race. But we reached a point where, and, and for me particularly, I had reached a point where I didn't have the same level of time to constantly be training for these bigger races. And, and honestly, I was a little frustrated that I had been running for so long and it was still sometimes a struggle to get myself out the door. That, that was my frustration. And so I was looking all of this in the back of my head thinking, how can I get better at running and not have it be such a struggle to get myself out the door without having to sign up for a race to get myself out the door? And so I was actually at the hair salon, um, getting my hair done and I was waiting for it to activate. And I was thumbing through some different news articles, um, on my, on my phone. And I was discouraged because everything was depressing and base and I just was annoyed with it. And so I went to what I thought in the past that I'd gone to for conservative, kind of a conservative news site. And the very first article that popped up was couple streak running for 15 years. And this site was so it's a, it's a more conservative <laughs> site. I was shocked that this kind of story and I was. Uh, Can you imagine that, Eric? I mean, you come across a story like what's going what on in the world? And that's it was clickbait so right there. It was. And that's exactly what I did is I clicked on it. And, <laughs> and I still get embarrassed to tell this story because I was like, yep, what is that all about? I got to find out. It was interesting, though. It was this beautiful story about a couple that had been streak running, which was they would run at least a mile every day. And they'd been doing it for 15 years. And that was just shocking to me that, that I was, I thought, wow, that is amazing. And so at that point, I started thinking, I'm like, could I do that? Could I shift my focus from race or a personal best or distance to could I just run at least a mile every day? I don't know. And that's when I called Jeff and I was like, Hey, I just read this article about these streak runners. Do you want to go streaking with me? I was like, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there was no question as far as that was concerned. And, and so we start, so we started a, a streak to run or walk at least one mile every single day. And that night. was one of the inadvertent things that we did when I first read that. I, I, there was something inside of me that knew that running every single day wasn't something that I could necessarily maintain. And, and so I, we changed it and I thought I can walk at least a mile six days a week. And so my, our streak, the first streak that we set was we're going to run or walk at least a mile six days a week. So that's the first part of the story. The second part of the story is 300 days later. And to get and to get that 300 days later, in other words, we had been streak running for streak run walk for 300 days. It was 300 days old when um, I recognized that, like I told you, I have problems and another deficiency in my life that I looked at and thought, I've got to do something different about this. So let me just give you a little bit of background on this. I have um, really bad periodontal disease, which is basically my periodontal disease eats away at the gums and the, and the bone of your teeth and your teeth fall out of your head. And I had had to get a couple of really expensive surgeries in order to repair that periodontal disease. And if you go to the periodontist or any dentist with anyone that has periodontal disease, they will tell you you need to do two things consistently every single day. And that is brush and floss. And I didn't like flossing. Now, brushing, I didn't mind because I like fresh breath. And Jamie honestly wouldn't be around me if I didn't brush. So that I was like OK. <laughs> the set, but flossing, that was where I just thought, 
I've got to do something different because I would, and this is where I got into the next part of, you know, why we're so passionate about streaking is I read, I don't know how many books on establishing good habits and what you can do to establish good habits. And I would do everything that was recommended in those books. I would put the floss in a place that I would remember. I set up the environment so that I would always be passing by it. I would have triggers and I would, tr- and I would give myself rewards. And those are all kind of the different areas of habit, but none of it stuck. None of it made it so that I was flossing on a regular basis. And so I was continuing to have all these problems with my teeth. Well, one morning when Jamie and I were getting ready to go out on our run, it was the 300th run. And I was looking at myself in the mirror and I was asking myself as I looked at the floss next to the sink, what is my problem? Why can I not just do this thing? I know it costs me money. It it, it costs me time. It's difficult um, as far as the teeth are concerned. I don't like it. And my mind immediately flashed to a conversation I'd had with the dental hygienist a couple of days before. She said, you know, Jeff, flossing is like exercising your gums. You do it a couple of times a day and you'll have healthy gums. At that moment, I looked at myself in the mirror and I thought, I've been running for 300 days straight. Why don't I just set a streak to floss my teeth? And so I did. I said, you know what I'm going to do? Instead of focusing on what it is that I'm doing, I'm going to focus on how long can I do it? And so the streak became floss my teeth at least two times daily. And Eric, that was 1,861 days ago. And I haven't missed wow. at all. Wow. I will tell you that I also, as well as probably the other four people, three people in my family, uh, when it comes to flossing, that has been a weakness. The, the thing for me, and I haven't done a streak with it, but the one thing that I have done with it is I actually, my, my, uh, dental hygienist said, Oh, I use this thing. It's, a, it's called the shower flosser. And again, that sounds weird oh. in and of itself also because you're flossing <laughs> in the shower, but it's literally a, a pipe thing that you connect in between the shower head and the, the water pipe. And then you just turn the pressure, the, the little, uh, you know, what is it? Dial. And then uh-huh. it shoots water through that. And so it's become part of my shower routine yes. to use that water pick flosser in the shower. Cause it's like, well, every, you know, I'm showering basically every day. And so I'm at least yes. doing it then. So, and, and, you know, I don't, I, I guess I could guess at what my streak would be. It's probably been a good 300 plus days now oh, since good. I got Congratulations. it. Fantastic. But now I don't even think about it. It's just a, Oh, that's the next thing. It's, you know, it's shampoo, rinse, repeat, floss, etc. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yep. that's exactly. so I, I can relate to both these things. Um, yeah. So I feel like you're, you're saying that a lot of the habit forming, um, prescriptive, you know, just best practices out there. There's, there's been a resurgence of that recently with a couple of name, you know, large, large named books. And, uh, you're saying that those didn't work for you per se until you had a perspective change on it. And moreover, it, it wasn't necessarily just a perspective change. It's that you would, show you, you'd already maintained momentum or 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 had momentum going in some other place i know somebody else at one point years ago on the show said that discipline begets discipline and so having oh, yeah. something yes. you know it, and we'll get into this later in terms of um you know recording your streak and have, and the power of that but it's because you'd already had a recorded streak that gave you the confidence to do another one in another area you yes. just brought up such a great point one of the things that we found in streaking is that the record is the record of your own credibility. And so the self credibility goes up exponentially because you can look back and say, I have been absolutely perfect in that thing for this many days. So like, for example, with flossing, I know I have flossed two times a day for 1,861 days. And so the credibility goes through the, through the roof as as you start to look at it and really consider, I can be consistent. I can do these things because here's, I, I want to go back to something you said about habit. And this was a kicker for us. We believe, we don't only believe, but we've seen it. Habit is this elusive thing that really is a myth. Habit is a myth. And I know there's a lot of books written on it and a lot of science that's done, but in actuality, real growth requires conscious Effort. It requires deliberate, purposeful effort. It, deli- it, it, 
it has to be something more than automatic. And I think that's where habit has gotten into the whole, all of our lexicon is that it is this automatic thing that if I do it enough times, it will just become automatic. Now, I'm not saying that there aren't things that won't become automatic. Like when I drive home from the grocery store or when I'm taking the boys to karate, those, those are all just kind of on autopilot, if you will. But also those aren't really part of my growth spectrum. I mean, those aren't things that I'm doing to grow. Habits are really about maintaining. And so I need them to be automatic, the habit. But there's something beyond the habit, which is the streak, which is really where you're in the growth zone. See, habits have become this thing where if I do it enough, there's two definitions of habit something you repeat on a regular basis and something that is automatic. And through time, people have started to merge those two things together. Well, if I repeat it enough times, it will become automatic. That's only true of a very few things. Most things require conscious, deliberate growth. And so that's where the streak comes in and why we get very passionate about it is because when we discovered or uncovered streaking and streaks and the laws of streaking, it opened up this whole new world to us that we thought we were just missing out on. It changed. We we started to look at it kind of like a tool belt. And we spent a lot of time as we, I loved at the beginning when you said, how did you unearth this? Because I totally feel like that has been a perfect description of the journey that we've taken on this is that we spent a lot of time looking at habits and why is a streak not a habit or why is a streak not a goal? How is it different? And we started to realize that each of these things are like tools in your tool belt. You've got habits, which oftentimes I love the way Jeff describes it a lot is when you fold your arms, you don't think about how you do it. When you tie your shoe, you're not consciously thinking about how you're tying it. Those things are habits in the sense of by defining them, you do it without thinking. The other definition of something that you do repeatedly, what I had found is that I could set up routines and as long as the routine was in place, I would do those things repeatedly. But if something happened that messed up my routine, then then I didn't do it. And that's where I was becoming frustrated. And that's what where the genesis of the streak really started to take place is we're like, okay, there's these tools in your tool belt. You've got habits, things that we need to have that become automatic. We've got these things that are repetitive And routines help us to have that repetitive nature in place. But I also am missing this one component, and that's where the streak came in. And as we've been able to recognize the power of that streak, it has been something that we've been able to use. Now that we understand where it fits in the lexicon, we've been able to use it in the proper way. And it's really opened up a vista of understanding. Yeah, I think what you've just hit on, and I think this is maybe a great entry point for a lot of people out there who may may still be confused between, you know, the difference between a habit and a streak is that if your routine was broken, would you feel strongly enough that you still need to intentionally pause and take stock of, okay, my routine got messed up now to get back to normal what what of my streaks, in other words, what of those things, mm-hmm. what streaks, in other words, did I not do because the routine got broken that I now exactly. need to, to reconfigure? We've had snow here recently and we had um, one or two different, you know, two hour delays where school still happened, but everything shifted. And since I dropped my, my, both my kids off at school, my day has shifted. My work at home day has shifted. Exactly. And then, so I still had to then, OK, let's do hard reset for the day. What's most important? What things did I do? I normally do at a certain time and now I need to do them at a different time. But I have to be aware of that and intentional. It, that's not a habit thing. That's not just a roll right into regularity. It's, right. It's being intentional. So, right. Exactly. And we had these for me personally, I had these things that were important to me that I needed to be doing, but they weren't necessarily urgent, but I wanted them to be a part of my life on a daily basis. So, For example, writing in my journal, I that was something that I'd always wanted to have be a part of my life, but it's not necessarily urgent and I don't particularly love writing. And so I didn't have that natural drive. And and so trying to understand how can I get this to be a part of my life? And that's where as we started to develop streaking. So the three laws of streaking are the first law is make it laughably simple. The second law is to keep a record of it. And the third law is to create a community. And when you follow these three laws, what you empower you, it's like you unlock the ability to be conscious and consistent. 
And then the consistency over time, as you are building up the energy behind this consistency, you unlock this thing inside of yourself that creates massive amounts of self-credibility. And that is what has been probably my favorite thing about my journey in streaking is that as I follow those laws of streaking and set those laws around the things that I want to do, as I'm starting to do them consistently, I believe in myself. I'm like, okay, I'm doing these things. So, and the first law, keep it laughably simple. I, I mentioned we stumbled on that because when I first looked at this running streak of run at least a mile every day, even though I had been running for probably 10 or 15 years, I still knew that my life as a mom of seven children, you have to accept disruption. You, you, <laughs> it's just part of being a mom. And so I knew in my mind from past experience, I'm like, I can't guarantee that I will have the energy or the capacity to run every single day. And so when I evaluated and looked at it and said, okay, what could I do when the emphasis is on being consistent? What I want to do here is consistently hold true to this every, you know, for whatever amount of time that I set daily or weekly, what can I do? And so when I looked at it and thought I can run or walk, give myself that walk six days a week, I made it simple enough for me that it was something that I could do even when life changed whether that be my routine was disrupted for something or literally sometimes the bottom fallout of life that, that, you know, big things happen. That's part of life. Could I still maintain this consistency in that? So that was law number one. Keep it laughably simple because your point is to make it so that you can continue to do it in all of the events of your life. You were saying you you wanted to shift from training over and over and over again for all these races. And, you know, you had an end goal in mind. You were training towards a goal of performing well in those races. I wonder then, while making it laughably simple and choosing kind of that baseline of this is something that can consistently be done and streaked, are we aiming towards a higher goal or an, an end game? What I, you know, I such love a good question. such a great question, Eric, because we had similar to that question is, are you streaking just a streak or is there something beyond that that you're aiming to do? And this is this brings me back to where I started and talked about a little bit about my profession as far as being a consultant and reading and what I need to do to read. Also, the running streak. So let me talk to both of those. We had a challenge from a friend in the early um, drafts of the manuscript. I had friends reading the manuscript and we would, you know, get their feedback and so forth. And one particular friend, his name is Randy. He gave us some pretty hard feed feedback. He asked us, he said, well, it seems like you're just streaking to streak. It doesn't, you know, this won't really do anything. What's the point? What's the point? And really gave it to us hard. And so Jamie and I set aside and then he did one thing that was really challenging. And he said, look, if I wrote a single sentence every single day, I'm an idiot. It would have no impact on my life. And at that moment, I looked at that sentence and I thought, oh, that would be hugely detrimental. If, I mean, just think if you're writing that every single day, and and so at that moment, it was the next kind of epiphany. I thought, well, what if I'm writing? Why? Why am I doing these streaks? What is it that I'm doing? Who do I want to become as I do these streaks? And that is where we formulated what we call a B statement. For example, I want to be of service to others or I want to be a thoughtful um, educated mother, or I want to be a active, involved father, or I want to be a excellent sales professional, or you name whatever. I mean, whoever you want to be. And so like you, the, the end state, if you will, is more the aspiration of who I want to be. And then I line up my streaks behind who I want to be. So back to the running and also the, the reading. So with running, we didn't want to be professional marathoners. We didn't want to be professional long distance people. We just wanted to be healthy and fit. And what we chose to do in order to be that person was to walk or run at least one mile daily. In my professional life, I wanted to be a professional who was 
educated and knowledgeable with the most current things that were out there. And so I started to look and say, well, what is the streak that I need to do? What do I need to do intentionally? Because again, reading is not a habit and it's not something that will ever be automatic for me, at least. It may be for someone else, but I don't think so. I think anyone that chooses to go in a path of growth, they're choosing to do it deliberately. And so what I chose to do, and this is in reference to the first law of streaking too, keep it laughably simple. I thought, okay, if I set a streak, what could it be as far as reading? I know that reading a book a week or a month is out of the question, not going to happen. That's that's not laughably simple for me. I started to pare it down and say, okay, well, maybe I could read at least a sentence daily. And I thought, you know what? That's laughable, but maybe I could do just a little bit more. And so my laughably simple streak was what that I set to be more conscious and aware and also read a lot more was is to read at least one paragraph in a nonfiction book daily. And when I did that, I thought at first, I mean, I was a little bit embarrassed to, you know, say that to anyone because it is so laughably simple. And honestly, that's usually what we tell is the telltale sign. If you're embarrassed to say your streak, then you know, you've it's got probably it simple a good one. If you're if you're <laughs> proud of your streak and can't wait to tell people, it's probably too hard. <laughs> yeah, No kidding. So read at least one paragraph in a nonfiction book daily. That was one thousand seven hundred sixty three days ago that I set that. And it's bit, it's now that old. And I've read, I don't know how many books and gained how many insights and how many different things. And that's the second part of this is so not only am I aiming to be who I want to be, it's also you have to suspend your disbelief that something so small and so simple is going to make such a big difference. But it does. It, it, it's amazing, Eric. I just I sit back and I still get blown away. We live in a society that is very focused on the outcomes and outcomes are important. And when we look at goals, a goal is very much you've got to get to that outcome. So I set a goal to run a marathon. I'm going to start here. I'm going to train for this long and I'm going to run the marathon and literally cross a finish line. That is what a goal is. And I think sometimes we forget or maybe not forget. It's harder to understand how valuable the inputs are and We haven't had a system that helped us be able to actualize putting input in. And that's what I've loved about streaking is that streaking changes the focus from the output to the input. You're focusing every day on what you're going to input. And when you do that, there's a lot of the outputs that take care of themselves that happen naturally. So when Jeff talks about suspending disbelief, it is very, very hard to set a laughably simple streak because we don't believe it's going to make a difference. We don't think that it's going to make any difference at all. But what happens is that when you are consistent in something, it does make a difference. And that's why when we talk about writing the streak, we always put in the at least. You can always do more. And I'm amazed at how often I do more in my daily streaks than what the streak is. It happens often. But I also love that the minute I do the laughably simple, I have succeeded in that streak. If I don't do more, it's okay. I've still won for the day. I've still communicated to myself that this thing that was important to me, I made happen today. And I did it yesterday and I'm going to do it again tomorrow. I've got to imagine that part of keeping it laughably simple or making it laughably simple is not starting too many streaks all at once out of the gate, that part of the power of building that confidence and self-confidence in adding in or stacking streaks comes from, one, making it small and simple and consistent over time and looking and seeing that not only have you been doing that that long, you've now become somebody uh, who has character, who has discipline, who can stick to it. I reference back again to the the reading of the books and then the adding in the flossing or the the running, uh, walking and running and then adding in other things. So how do we keep from self-sabotaging right at the beginning when we want to stack? We want to stack everything. We want to start streaking all of the things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because you get excited about it. Honestly, it's like it does unlock the door of this opportunity that for us, it wasn't there. Uh, I, I, and so. Speaking of that, and I get excited about it because that question right there, we get asked quite often. And the answer is the, the laughably simple 
do the laughably simple, at least just one streak, maybe two for at least a hundred days. And when you do that, you start to recognize, and this was really from our own self-learning. We started to recognize that we could add another streak when we were comfortable that the streak that we had just added would continue forward. In other words, we had the self credibility, which really plays into law number two, which is no record, no streak in the record res- there's a couple of things that happen in the record. In the record is the lifeblood of the streak. That keeps, the streak wants to live. You all of a sudden feel it and and have the desire to do it. The other thing that the record does is it's the record of your credibility. It's the record of you've done this for this many days in a row without fail. In fact, in the book, talk about Jerry Stein, Jerry Seinfeld. Um, that is one of the areas that we talk about is that it's the record because one of the things that he emphasized is he looked on, he said, as you look at that calendar, every day you see a red X, what's happening in actuality is your confidence is growing as a comedian. You're realizing that I'm writing at least one joke daily. And that was his actual streak, right? At least one joke daily. And he looked at it and he was counseling an amateur comedian who, as that amateur comedian was asking about this, Jerry just said, look, your confidence grows so that when you get on that stage, you know, you've written jokes for 365 days or for 740 days in a row. That has a whole new power in and of itself. So as as you go along this road and really strive diligently to keep the record, if you will, you'll know when the right time is to start the next streak. We found, again, it's right around 100 days is when people turn the corner in two ways. One, they start believing that the small really does work. I mean, we have a lot of streakers out there that say, when we hit 100 days and realize that we had done it that long, it all of a sudden opened up an opportunity for us to set maybe another streak and go forward from there. But that's when the confidence goes. It's when you start to believe that you can be consistent. The other thing that's amazing is that the actual process of streaking teaches you patience. You can't do two a days often. You can't go faster. It literally is. You do the simple act each day and and adding those acts together is what creates it. And so the process of streaking innately teaches you to be patient and to think about, okay, do I really want to do this? But in the process of thinking about it, you also know, okay, I, I know I can do this because I've had this other streak going long enough. So I believe that I can do this. And it gives you this confidence to set the new one, but tempered with the reality of I really need to do it. Like I'm holding myself, I'm truly holding myself accountable to this commitment that I'm making just to myself. And that's where I really think so much of the power is in, is that we make these commitments to ourselves, these small, simple things that we're going to do because they're important to us. They are what we've taken the time to think about who we want to be. And now through streaking, we have a way to actualize that. And as we do it, we recognize the power that comes as we've kept these commitments to ourselves, which tempers that desire to want to fix everything at once. And it helps us to realize, you know what? Progress is sometimes slow and that's okay because the slow progress also sticks. It's true to what I really, I really am actually becoming who I want to be. And I'm doing that one day at a time. And that takes time, but I'm also building this level of credibility and confidence in myself as I do it. I've come to think of each of those days in a streak as one more brick being laid. Exactly. So exactly right. you know, it's, and, it and stacks, you, <laughs> literally it stacks. stacks. And it's amazing to me because you stack it and you just kind of focus each day on the input. And then every now and then you step back and you're like, wow, look at what I've built. One brick at a time, literally. But it's amazing. I'm assuming there's some sort of visual representation that works best, uh, maybe for you, but in general, are you using, I mean, again, Seinfeld and his calendar is one way. I mean, I could see, I literally could see somebody hanging, you know, two, three, five, ten calendars on a wall with a label <laughs> yes. on each one for each streak and just going with that. What are some of the best ways that you've found work for you or others in terms of visually keeping this record? That is so good. I actually started with a calendar 
um, the same way because it was so fun to have it in front of me and, and be like, okay, as I progressed a couple years into it, I realized that I had enough streaks that it wouldn't fit on the one calendar. And as you said, putting up in front of you would be fantastic, but that would take up a lot of room. And so we ended up, I pushed hard from the beginning that I wanted an app. Well, and so serendipitously, again, yes. I was explaining streaking to a good friend of mine and I was just telling him about what it is that you do and how you do it. And he happens to own an app development company. And he said, I would love to do the app, the streaking app. And I said, OK. <laughs> and so he he developed this app. We call it streaking. Um, and in the app, it's this great visual representation of how long you've kept your streaks alive. So when I started too, I started, I kept mine in an Excel spreadsheet where I just marked off the X whenever I'd complete, you know, one or two of the, whenever I'd complete my streaks for the day. And that got cumbersome as well. And so now the, the application that's out there, it allows you to mark and, and see your progress and some really cool stuff um, that happens with that progress. But I wanted to go back to one other thing as well. One of the things we found is children and streaking, they love streaking. They love the visual streak. They love mm-hmm. to see the chain grow around their room or they love to see, you know, the calendar, the, the stickers, stickers on, on the calendar. Yeah. They love that type of streak. We've our children. Uh, you can imagine they're streakers in a sense, <laughs> but they have of their own accord set some different streaks. Like for example, our son, um, Chance, who is nine years old, he set a streak to do at least one karate move daily. He wanted to, he's working toward his black belt and he said, and he hit a hundred days about two weeks ago and it is and his karate studio and everything they celebrated, he broke a board and all this great stuff. But that visual reference of the record allows you to celebrate. And that's, you know, the record, another thing that it does is this whole celebration, the aspect of celebration. Really love that. But the app is really where we keep all of our streaks now. And it's been great. We've de- And it's continuing to develop as we go. But the way that it's been set up, I love it because you, you, you're able to put in your B statement. Who do I want to be? Why am I doing this streak? And then you put in your streak and then each day or week, you're able to just push. We use it as a honeycomb, kind of the honeycomb because of who I want to be, but you're able to push this honeycomb and it gives you a little, it gives you a little animation that says, yay, you did your streak for the day, which is funny, but it totally, I have grown to really love that little boost of celebration every time I do my streak. And then the other thing that's wonderful about it. So you've got your B statements and you can divide your streaks into these different places of who you want to be. And then we're working diligently. We have right now, and it's going to continue to become bigger, a community where you can share the streaks that you have with friends and they can congratulate you and send you high fives and see how you're doing in your progress. And then they can share their streaks with you. And it just becomes this collaborative place where you are building and strengthening and learning from one another. You were talking a second ago about celebrating. And not only do I think that that's powerful and a positive reinforcement of Acknowledging a mile marker on the streak, if you will, but then also that celebration feeds into the external power of people being in a community around your streak and other streaks altogether. Eric, that brings up one of the, one of the streaks that really set us on the whole power of the community and what you say as far as celebration is concerned is so apt. There's a lot of times where People will say, well, it helps hold you accountable and accountable is often a little bit of a heavy word. It's it's somewhat a deterring word because, you know, being held accountable seems like it's, you know, I'm looking after you. I'm watching after you. And what we really found is that the community is about the celebration and the celebration of your core community, what we call the core community or people that are right around you. And then there's the streaking community, people that share your same streaks. So you've got a core community and your streaking community and those that share your same streaks, they celebrate with you as you keep going and putting your streaks together. It, so where we came across the whole I thought of community is we had basically looked at law number one and law number two and recognize that, yes, we need to keep it laughably simple. That is how you keep the streak alive is by keeping it laughably simple. And two, no record, no streak. And then we started to look around and say, was there one other, was there anything else? And what we saw is that every streak we had researched existed within a community. 
And one of my personal favorite streaks happens to be Cal Ripken Jr. And Cal Ripken Jr., Major League Baseball, they call him the Iron Man because he played 2,632 games in a row consecutively, never stopped. Now, before him was Lou Gehrig, and he played 2,130 games in a row. And the night that Cal Ripken Jr. broke Lou Gehrig's record of 2,130, it was in Baltimore. Uh, Cal plays for the, or played for the Orioles when he was playing. The, the stands were packed. I mean, and there, this is quite a story and I won't go into the whole thing, but baseball had struggled mightily because they had a strike and everything else. They were losing fans. And I will tell you that the streak of playing consecutively the games that Cal Ripken Jr. did, that was either the key or the thing that saved baseball and brought fans back because on the night that he went into the stands or into the stadium to play his 2,131st game, there were, it was packed. There were over 47,000 fans. There were millions of people watching on TV. The president of the United States was there all to watch him play a game that he had just now crossed the threshold of 2,130. And in the fifth inning, it was the top of the fifth inning when the streak um, kept alive and it actually counted as the real game. Here's the interesting part. This community of baseball, when the streak went past 2,130 and flipped over to 2,131, everyone in the stands stood up and started cheering for Cal Ripken Jr., Not only did they start cheering, they kept cheering. He made 11 curtain calls in in order to get the the game going. I mean, there's still a lot of game. The the fans would not sit down. Finally, he went around the entire outside of the stadium, high-fiving everyone, thanking them and enjoying the moment. The total applause time was 22 minutes. It's the longest spontaneous applause of any sport at any time, 22 minutes. And why? It wasn't because they were winning or won the game or won the World Series. It was because of one person's consistency. And that consistency brought the community together and the community celebrated with them. That's when we recognize that every streak lives within a community, be it two, Jamie and I, or 60,000 or millions, it doesn't really matter. The streak lives in the community because people celebrate with you. Wow. So personal note that that hit me a little bit harder than I thought it would have because I've seen Cal Ripken play a number of times for the Rochester Red Wings, the home team of the Orioles, where I grew up. So oh, that's yes. awesome. wow. wow, that is so neat. That yeah. is so neat. Yeah, well, we I, had, that streak is just one of my absolute. I love telling that story because it's so powerful. And it's where I recognized that there's winning streaks where you can win. But the consecutive streak, that is where the power is. So obviously, we there's a little bit of a downside or potential downside here for a lot of people. They've potentially done a streak before and then it breaks. You you, the, mm-hmm. you know, the, the unintentional thing, the thing we're not talking about, the thing we're not aiming for, but can happen is a streak breaks. And yep. how do you know, obviously, the question follow up question to that is, how do you recover from a broken streak? And I've been I've been watching a lot of a certain TV show in that based in the olden days. And uh, there's a lot of drinking. And then one of the guys stops drinking and then starts going to meetings. And he did, uh, you know, get pulled back in briefly, but then mm-hmm. said, nope, got to go to a meeting. You know, it was a one time thing. It was an accident and gets back on. Which is it on the wagon or off the wagon? I forget. But whichever one's the right one. Right. He, there you he go. gets right back on or off. It's on, isn't it? Fell off the wagon is the bad thing. Fall off the wagon yeah, and you get back on. Yes. Back on. Yes. Yeah. So you get back. So he gets back on the wagon. I, I envisioned that similar to what recovering from a broken streak would look like. Exactly. And you ask such a good question and, and I love the, the, whatever show you're watching. That's a great it, it, example. I'm watching Mad Men over again recently. Oh, okay. That's what okay. There we go. <laughs> yeah. And so I love, so a couple of things that happen when a streak is broken. Um, the first thing I would recommend is you evaluate, did you make it too hard to start off with? Sometimes we get ambitious and we've, we 
we start a streak and you get into it and you realize, you know what? I thought it was laughably simple, but I need to make it even simpler. So that's what happened with you. I I do. I had I had a streak to watch a TED talk once a week and I, I made it for about five weeks and then I lost it. And I started it again and I made it three weeks and I lost it. And I'm like, why can I not keep this streak? And what I realized is I thought, I guess I've made it too hard. And so I changed that streak to choose a TED Talk to watch once a week. Again, with the mindset that sometimes when you're starting something new, getting it simple enough that you're adding it into your life takes time. And so that's okay. So the first thing, if you're breaking a streak, evaluate, did I make it too hard? Second thing that happens sometimes when you've broken a streak is, is it really something you want to be? Maybe you set a streak around something you thought was cool or you thought you wanted to be. And when you got into it, you realized, I really don't have any passion around this. And I guess I don't want to be this person. And that's okay. I think that's part of the value of streaking is it helps me to recognize what things I really do value and what I'm really willing to put effort behind. And it's okay that I started thinking that something was going to be value that I wanted in my life and to figure out, you know, nope, I don't. And that's okay. I think that's a valuable thing as well. The third thing that happens is that sometimes stuff just happens and you have a long streak and you lost it. I've had that happen a couple of times, some of them really long streaks, like over a year of reading to my kids and something happened. We had company in town and I just missed it. And when that happened, um, it was, to be honest, it was, it was slightly devastating um, because <laughs> she was, it was tough. I, it, was tough. it was yeah. really tough. And, and, and I went through the process and evaluated and I'm like, I love this streak. I definitely want to keep it. I can't make it much simpler than five sentences a day. I mean, that's, it's simple enough. I just simply missed it. And so what I recognized is I took some time and I mourned that streak. I was sad for, I let myself be sad a little bit that I had missed it. But then I also took the time to look back and think, you know what though, for over a year, I have been doing this. Like I was consistent. I I, I actually have added this to my life. And so though I'm starting over because I did start over with day one, I had a place to go to that I was like, okay, I'm going to keep doing this. And I'm going to surpass what I did. And in that process, it was an interesting thing because that's where I learned the lesson that you can't do two a days. I had been at over 300 days, 365 days. I'd been more than that. And I wanted to get back to where I was. But that's where I looked at it and recognized, okay, once again, I'm focusing on the outcome. The purpose of keeping track is to give you that credibility, that recognition that you're doing it. However, What you're really wanting to accomplish here is to add this thing to your life consistently. And by keeping record, you know that you've been consistent. So instead of saying, well, I think I've done this or I've mostly done it, question mark, you say, no, I know I've done this and I know I missed a day and I know I'm going to start over again and I'm going to patiently continue to have this be a part of my life. And so inherent in the in the methodology of streaking, it also teaches you to be patient and to practice adding these things that require us to just do a little bit every day consistently, not something that we can binge and do a lot in and then be like, oh, I'm done. There's things in life that you just can't do that with. There's a couple of other things that we learned in the broken streak. And that is one, any streaks that are time dependent are usually streaks that are not that good. We have a couple of people that have time dependent streaks and they, and they do a pretty good job. But whenever you're, and what I mean by time dependent is I'm going to read for five minutes or I'm going to Mm. practice uh, breathing or yoga or whatever for 15 minutes or any of those things when it's time dependent, we find that that dependency has a negative impact on the streak. It's better just to say, I'm going to do at least one move in yoga daily, or I'm going to read at least five sentences daily. That gives you, it's almost as if as soon as you started the streak, you had success at it. And it seems a little bit odd to be saying that you haven't made it simple enough. I mean, we're almost saying like, look, you need to be a little bit more of an underachiever. (laughs) But, But that's, that's the key is, that the achievement is in the consistency. So the other thing we look at is when you've broken a streak is look at the dependencies. In other words, if there's a lot of things that have to happen in order for you to complete that streak, you, you're dependent on a lot of outside or variables. You just, 
you've got to back that one up a little bit and say, no, nope, I'm not going to be able to do that and see where you need to go to as far as how simple it needs to be. Like, for example, if someone was say, and let's go in health and fitness, because that's an easy one for everyone to visualize. I'm going to lift weights every day. Well, you have to have the weights in order to lift them every day. Now, if it makes sense in your life and you always have that, then that's probably good. Or you could set that type of a streak. If, however, you aren't going to have that or there's going to be something and most assuredly there will be that sets that off, then really the streak should be I'm going to exercise at least one time daily, something like that. So that now your dependencies aren't so significant that you're breaking the streak because you just can't keep it alive. Those are so that the time, the time streak and a lot of dependencies are there. Um, one other thing that I found, and just to emphasize what Jamie said, it's if it's not lined up with who I want to be, then I start to lose interest in it pretty quickly. I think that's the thing for me is when I've broken streaks, it's because I've either not been clear on how it fits into who I'm wanting to be. So the stacking and what I'm stacking it towards doesn't really make sense or, right. you know, there's not anything there or I've uh, had <laughs> maybe not a clear system of recording it or <laughs> not necessarily connected with community. And so then trying to recover from a broken streak almost just feels like a, well, doesn't really matter or yes. you know, yeah, it's just, you know, I don't I don't pick back up there uh, that or I, again, tried to start too many streaks all at once. All at yeah, once. you yeah. got a great one there. Absolutely. So. And so as you look at those laws, as we develop them through time, you know, Jamie and I, it took us five years really to write the book um, because we were experiencing it. It was our journey. And we wrote the book a lot like the journey that we took. And that is what we invite everyone to do is, is start your streaking journey is to go out there and, and say, wh who do I want to be? And what is the one or two things that I want to do consistently in order to be that person? And on the same note, it's kind of chicken and egg here because sometimes we say, we'll start with your B statement and line things up. But the other side of it is you also can just start streaking and recognize what you like to do and then realize who you want to be. And that's where you start to then develop a community around it because you start to see people that are similar or having a similar streak. It's like, you know, when you bought the Honda Accord and you never realized another Honda Accord was on the street until you bought one. Right. <laughs> and now they're everywhere. <laughs> now they're everywhere. <laughs> that's that's the same with streaking. When you start a particular area, you'll start to find the community. And to your point, that community just brings so much strength and and so much fun. It's really uh, great to be a part of it. Yeah, man. Well, so for somebody who wants to jump into this one i want to send people to get the book um where can they find out one more about the work that you're doing here two getting the book and then three uh the app that you, you mentioned yeah so we are our website is streakingmastery.com www.streakingmastery.com can go there we also have the streaking podcast that publishes twice a week and we talk it's specifically dedicated to talking about streaking principles and application so oftentimes we'll go into application for example this month we're talking about relationships and how streaking can improve your relationships and we give examples of what that is so that's the other one is the streaking podcast and then to to get the book, it's at Amazon. Um, we also in any indie bookseller, um, Barnes it's and Barnes and Noble. And then the app is in the in Google Play as well as the Apple App Store, and it's streaking. And if you type in streaking, it, the app should come up. You should be able to go from there. Perfect. And the app is great. It allows you to start with three streaks. Yeah, it's so that you get used to. <laughs> we purposely put a paywall in the app so that people would only do three. Or we we tried to just gently nudge them toward look three just streaks. start with three just start with three don't, <laughs> it's don't free get crazy. and you can just start with three yeah and then once you know you can add more oh great that's perfect i love that you've kind of set it up that way uh well jamie and jeffrey it's been great talking with you this has been an amazing conversation really enlightening really really positively reinforcing a lot of what i think a lot of people already know but feel maybe they've, um, you know, again, in all the talk about habits, they've 
learned something maybe incorrectly and can maybe fall back on streaking as a recovery uh, for their own broken habits. So Yes. Oh, you just said I something so amazing. One of the things I think about is people, the phrase is out there so many times of, well, I need to develop new habits. That is just false. You need to develop new streaks. Streaks are what you need to develop. Habits will fall out of streaks, which is great how you do something. And streaks are what you stand on in order to reach for your goals. Because when you fail at a goal, you fall to the success of your streak. And when you succeed at a goal, guess what? You also stand on your streak to su- succeed at that goal. And so the streak becomes the thing that you are putting intentionality around. And it gives you intentionality to become who you want to be. That's a great thought and a great closing statement. So again, Jeffrey, Jamie, great talking with you. And I will link up to everything we mentioned in the show notes for this episode. Thank you so much. Thank Thank you, you, Eric. Eric. You are amazing. We love your show. Keep going. Well, that's another podcast crossed off your podcast listening to-do list. I hope that you enjoyed this conversation with Jeffrey and Jamie. And I really enjoyed hearing from them about streaking and the power of it. And they got me more interested in it than I had been before. I mean, I was already aware of it to a point, but but this takes it to a whole other level. I definitely suggest grabbing the book and I'll link up to that in the show notes, which you can find at beyond the to-do list.com, or you can click on in your podcast player app of choice, wherever you're listening to this. While you're there, if you can think of somebody who needs to hear this conversation, do them the favor and do me the favor of sharing this episode with them. Hit that share button in your podcast player app of choice. Let people know about this episode and this conversation and this book and the power of it. And again, thank you so much for sharing. Thanks for listening. And I will see you next episode.